Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Killinger and behind me is my 2022 Polaris Ranger 1000 Premium. Today we're going to start on a budget build. I've had this machine for a little over a year now. I kind of know what I want to do with it. So I figured I'd go ahead and upgrade it and take you guys along. We're going to put a heater in it, a windshield, some doors, a wench, and ultimately a plow and a couple lights. And we're going to do all this for under $4,000. So stick with me. Let's get to it. All right, guys. So first thing we're going to do is install this heater because I would have to, I got to remove the dash anyway to do it. And I would have had to have removed the windshield if it was already on. So we're going to go ahead and put the heater in first and then we'll work our way around the vehicle and get the, the other upgrades done. So for heater, I went with the Inferno cab heaters. There's no affiliation here, guys. I have nothing to do with Inferno cab heaters or any of these parts that I'm putting on this machine. I'm paying for all of this out of pocket on my own with no help from any of these companies. I will say, though, I bought the Inferno heater from Lion Parts, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Their customer service is absolutely outstanding, and they ship this product to me super fast. So I am impressed with <laughs> the company that sold me this unit. But other than that, I have no affiliation with anyone. I went with this Inferno cab heater system because this bad boy tucks away behind the dashboard. It takes up no room in the cab and everything looks like a factory installation when you're done. So I'm really looking forward to getting this thing together. Now I've taken the liberty of already pulling all the parts out of the box to kind of go over what we have and make sure everything is here. And it looks like we have everything we need to do this installation. We do have our wiring harness, our main unit with heater core and blower. We have some ductwork hose, some coolant hose, some outlet louvers for our heat defrost and uh, floor, and a, uh, a nice rocker switch, along with a set of very clear instructions. I'm actually really impressed with these instructions. Our instructions are pretty clear. We're going to start right at step one because that's uh, I don't I've never done this before. So I'll remove the hood. I've already done that. Remove the top dash panel. Remove the center dash cup holder. Remove the passenger side dash storage compartment. Remove the driver gauge panel. Remove the extra three bolts on the passenger side, and remove the center cubby storage panel. So you go over to our. Uh, pictures here and it gives you a picture of everything that you should be removing so pretty clear pretty clear instructions I've got this thing all torn apart per the instructions. The dash is out. This lower cubby hole is out. And there was three screws over here that they said to remove. I'm not sure why yet, but we'll find out. But I wanted to point out, <clears throat> there is an absolute ton of room behind this dashboard. They, uh, they did not take full advantage of all the storage opportunities in this machine. But uh, that's also... Like I said, the reason why I bought the Inferno unit, because it's going to mount back here underneath and take up some of this excess space. And maybe that's what it is, you know, from the factory. That's where the heater is from the factory. I don't know. But uh, it's going to be a nice install, I can tell you that. A lot of stink bugs in here. My goodness. All right. Step two looks like we're going to do the wiring. We're going to install the switch and the wiring harness. Looks like everything's plug and play. We'll have to cut this out of the dash panel for our switch. And then you just run the wiring harness underneath to the front. And it's going to plug right into one of these factory bus bars or whatever you want to call them. These are all accessory plugs for different things. So 
Let's uh, see about cutting this switch out. All right, guys, I think the way to go on this one is with one of these uh, flush cutting tools. Instructions didn't say, but it is blatantly obvious that we are going to run this harness right through this hole. And this one here will plug into this. Just like that. That's nice. So we'll tidy all this up later. I'll tell you what, that was uh, that was a little bit of a challenge there. Okay. All right, guys. Well, instructions say to take this template and tape it in place. And then use your hole saw to drill it out. But all you really need to do is take a center punch, put it, put your template where you think you want your louver. I think that looks pretty good there. It doesn't really specify. Take your center punch here, put it on that black dot. It makes a nice center point for your hole saw. All right, for this you'll need a two and a half inch hole saw. And I'm going to have to move you guys. Pieces of duck work. We're going to put the louvers in our dash, so we're going to 
cut this out along the lines. Those louvers are super nice and they cover a lot of sin so don't ever take them out all right guys this is going to be difficult to film this but we are looking down in the dash or if you look up through here the opening in the uh lower panel i think that's where i'm going to put you but we are we're drilling our holes for our hoses for the heater core to come out, run to the places they need to run to. Now, the directions do not say any measurements. They're just, they say, find this figure eight here, drill above it, and then drill above that. And you want to stay in the center of the figure eight. So, whew, hope this is right. Give us two rubber grommets to install. I think these are the last holes I have to cut or drill. I think we're done with that. Nice. I'll tell you what, I'm impressed with the quality of everything and the thoughtfulness just a well thought out kit all right so now we need some heater hose cut all right we need two feet of this and supposedly there's lines on here to help you measure i do not see lines on this hose so i'll just measure it out Foot hose goes through the upper grommet. And then the remainder goes through the lower. Just like that. Now I'm going to connect these hoses.
Well, now the real fun begins. We've got to splice this T in there. And I'd like to not make a huge mess. Oh, I brought the wrong clamps on. I need the bigger ones. Too bad, guys. Pretty hard to film this, so you have to bear with me. But we just installed that T, and they say have pointing towards the radiator, which that's to me that's pointing towards the radiator. So um, I like the hand tighten hose clamps. I'm not real thrilled with these hose clamps. They they're, they're okay. They haven't stripped out, but they kind of feel chintzy. That would make for a bad day on the trail. So one of those what failed. So I'm just I'm gonna keep an eye on them. And you typically hose clamps don't fail once they're on. So we'll see what happens. All right, now I gotta tie in this hose. This is our bottom coolant hose to the heater core. So we gotta tie that guy in in the back. Whew. Almost done. All right, this is gonna be very tricky to uh, film, but we are on the Passenger side of the vehicle. We have the bed in the upright position down here This hose here Is what we want to tie into we're gonna put a T Up in here Right there basically, so I'm gonna try and set this camera up So you guys can see this Probably the best I'm going to be able to do. So, first thing I want to do is get in here with these hose clamps. Clamp off as much possible coolant flows as, as I can.
box. I will say this, if you're doing a 1000 premium, I don't know, maybe the XP is different, but for whatever reason, they say to cut this passenger side hose at 18 inches. Once you cut your driver's side hose at 36 inches, don't cut this hose. Whatever's left, use, because that's a little short. It'll work, but I wish it was, I wish I would have not cut it, but that's what the instructions said to do. So, 1000 premium, you run into this, don't cut the passenger side hose. up our installation of the heater we need to drive this thing get it up to operating temperature and burp the air out of the system so let's take this thing for a drive and uh, get it all squared away So you guys may have noticed we jumped forward in a couple of days here you'll notice there's a windshield in and outdoors and the video on that stuff's coming up but i wanted to wrap this video up and i couldn't move forward with this video until i finished up the windshield and the doors a lot of moving pieces <laughs> anyways i would say overall that this job wasn't bad at all in the last clip in the shop, you saw me reinstalling the dashboard. That's really all I did to finish up this job. It's just a reverse of what we started with. And then I went ahead and topped off the cooling system. And I heard that bleeding these systems were kind of hard, but I didn't have that issue. I topped this thing off, took it for a drive, let it sit overnight, went back the next day, checked it, topped it off again, took it for a nice long drive, and then let it sit again overnight. And on the third day, when I checked it, it was still full. So all the, uh, all the air bubbles worked their way out pretty easily. So overall, the job wasn't bad at all. I, I would say, I don't know what it, I don't know how long it took me, but I would say you could probably do this installation in three to four hours if you just concentrated on it and not filming and you didn't have anything else to distract you self aside three to four hours you should be able to comfortably install it in that amount of time the instructions were super clear if you have any mechanical ability at all this job would be pretty easy for you if you're a, if you're new to this and you don't have a mechanical background you might have some difficulty, but I think you could still pull it off between the instructions and videos like this that kind of help you out along the way. There wasn't a lot in the instructions missing. It was pretty straightforward and thorough. So overall, I'm impressed with the installation. I'm impressed with the quality of the parts. Everything is well built and well thought out. And this does literally look like a factory installation the average person probably would never know the difference. The only downside to this whole setup is there is no temperature control. It's either on or off. Now it does have a shutoff valve for in the summertime, you can shut the coolant flow off to the heater core, which is a bonus. But in the spring and fall, when you don't need a lot of heat, the way to regulate the heat in the cab is just with the fan on and off. So 
not a deal breaker not the end of the world this is obviously not a cadillac it is a tool on the homestead and it's just nice to have heat for in the winter time when you're using the snow plow so guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope someone found this video helpful and look forward to part two where i install the windshield and doors to continue on our budget build and then i think there'll be a part three where i install a winch other than that guys we'll see you in the next video Come all you young rounders And a story I'll tell Of the promise of heaven And the warning of hell but Take heed where you ramble Or too soon you will go Way up on the hill flowers grow Well he met in the springtime The sun sang Two star crossed lovers In the still melting snow Where the loving was easy And the courting was brief there they called her a beauty They called him a thief In the quiet of the evening They'd steal away Where the laughter would flow And the fiddle would play Where the folks called it wrong but hell, it seemed all right In the sun-painted picture In the day turned to night Come up on the hillside We'll have a time You'll bring the kisses, honey I'll bring the wine Keep your heart guarded or Too soon it'll fall When one walks back home, honey Only one knows it all Well, she walked up the hillside Alone one day And the heart is a hunter Always knows of its prey. 